Today I'm going to show you the Edelbrock calibration kit for the Performer, AVS, and Thunder Series carburetors and a couple of cool tips on how to keep everything sorted out straight. So we'll get started right away. Now before we get into this calibration kit, I'm going to bring up the one thing we talk about every time we do a carburetor video, and that is the proper setup for your fuel system. If this isn't right, it doesn't matter anything you do on the tuning side, you're not going to get the full benefit out of the carburetor. And that's getting the fuel system set up properly. Between the tank, the pump, and the carburetor, I cannot overemphasize that fact enough to run those two fuel filters. And we talked about this in the Ultimate Tuning Guide, and it's very, very important that you do that to keep the fuel pressure correctly, to keep it clean, to keep everything out of the system that doesn't need to be there. So for sure, make sure that you have your fuel system set up properly properly good pressure regulator whether you're deadheading it running it back to the tank doesn't matter what it is just get this right and everything that you do from here on forward is going to be good so again we've got to get this sorted out trust me if you do this right you're going to have a much better time with it doesn't matter what any carburetor you're working on so why do you need a calibration kit anyway well the calibration kit is a full kit of the rods, jets, springs that you need to properly tune the carburetor. If you remember back to the tuning table that we talked about in that ultimate tuning guide uh, that I did uh, last year, it will give you all the rods and jet part numbers that you need. And the good thing is, is the tuning kit, the calibration kit has all of those in there. If you remember that grayed out area right in the middle of the, uh, the chart there, all those rods and jets are included in the kit. So it's perfect. Everything that you need to get this dialed in properly with everything on the primary side and a little bit on the secondary side. So everything that you need to get this really done is right here included in the kit. So if you follow this table and we talked again how to read that table properly and you can go back and review the, the ultimate tuning guide to see exactly how to read that chart. You can get this dialed in pretty good with just this kit and if you uh you may need the uh additional squirter kit or whatever but for the most part most vehicles you can kind of dial in right with just this calibration kit on its own so what is inside this calibration kit when you open it up you got a couple of things in here one you've got all the little compartments with all the rods and jets plus everything compartmentalized on the springs you'll need. On the top side, you get this nice little uh, card that has all the information that you're going to need. So all the jet sizes and part numbers, how they're identified, same with the metering rods, plus on the step-up springs, what color they are, and then what vacuum uh, level that corresponds to. So the reason why this is important is Every single one of the pieces in this, other than the springs, which are color-coded, is identified by the part number that's engraved on it, which is different than the actual Edelbrock part number that you order, and the size of them. So it will tell you exactly what the actual Edelbrock part number is, so when you're going back to the tuning guide, you can kind of reference all that out. Now... They're, the part numbers that are described on here are very, very, very small. So I'm going to give you a cool tip here on how to keep all that sorted out. So when you're doing this on the fly, you know, in your driveway, at night, whatever, you can kind of quickly figure out what is what is what. So when you pop the jets out here, we're going to start with the jets. On the face of it, there is the part number the second half of the part number scribed on there twice. If it's a 410, if it's a 458, I can't remember all the, the different uh, numbers that are on there, but it will show you that on there, and then you can go back to the chart and match it up with what size it is, what the Edelbrock part number is. So what I will do is I will figure out what jet is in that first compartment, then I will put a black dot by the part number and by the part number that's on the jet. And then I will color in the compartment that's in, in that it is in. So now I can reference quickly by color what jet is in what hole and what it corresponds to on the card. So 
it's it's a little bit better to do this now than try to do this in you know out in the like I said if you're trying to do this at night at a racetrack or you know trying to get the thing retuned before you head out for the evening whatever it's so much easier to kind of go by a color code than it is to try to read the part number on the jet or rod and then try to figure out what the Edelbrock part number is. So it'll be very, very simple for you when you go back to the tuning guide um, to know exactly what it is. So certainly keep the card um, that comes in the calibration kit, your color coding, and then you'll just have to be a little diligent to make sure that you take care of the, uh, um, that the, you know, you put the jets back in the right compartment and you don't cross them over. So I will do that with all of the jets. Uh, and then just given that there is, I've got four colors of marker here that I usually use. Now you can go get different color Sharpie markers, um, and certainly do it differently, but I will use the four colors. I will use a highlighter for the fifth color and the sixth one I will leave uncolored. So in this case, again, you can go buy six different markers if you want. I just happen to use four. It doesn't really matter. You can do it whichever way you want. But um, it's just the way that I've always done it. So I know that the uncolored one is the last one on the list. Everything else should be followed by color and go right down the list. So sometimes the number on the rods is a little more difficult to see. So what I will do is take a picture of my cell phone. That way I can select the picture, get a really good close-up view of what that number is. Now it's a four-digit number that they use on the rods, and it's without the dash, so it's four digits, and it corresponds with the four-digit number minus the dash, obviously, uh, on the card. So you can reference it back and forth now. With the rods, uh, it's a little bit more difficult to, to color code them because there's multiple different rod sets that are in one little box. But a quick, down and dirty, easy way to do this is if you color the top of the rod near where it goes by the piston that goes into the carburetor, it's a really, really easy way to get a good visual on it when you pop the little cover off or when you're digging into the box to try to find the next rod size that you need. So it, it just, with the rod in the carburetor, typically sometimes the fuel will get in there a little bit uh, and wear that off a little bit. But for the most part, you can do this very, very simply. It will not get uh, all of the Sharpie off there. And when it dries, it's usually on there pretty decent. But uh, anyway, that's the best way to do those. That way you can keep them all separate. Doesn't really matter if they get all bundled up or, or jumbled up. You drop the, you know, the, the carrier on the, you know, ground or whatever, and all the rods and jets go flying everywhere. The rods are a little bit easier. You can just pair them up by color. They can go back in their little uh, compartments in the uh, carrier and you're fine. So anyway, that's a really, really down and dirty, easy way of keeping those separate. And it'll help you out when you're, like I said, if you're at the track or, or you know, trying to make a little jet change or rod change or whatever on the fly a little bit quicker. This is just a nice, easy way of doing it. So get, use those same Sharpies that you did on the jets to color in the little portions of the tray. Now you're going to col color the rods themselves to keep track of them. All right, so let's talk about what spring to choose here. So in the kit, you'll notice that there are multiple different springs that are included with it. It'll give you a vacuum rating that each are, are rated at. Blue is at three, silver all the way up to eight. So let's talk about that a little bit. How do you know which, one, which spring is for you? So what you will need to do is you will need to take a measurement of the vacuum at idle while the transmission is in neutral. You don't want it in park. You don't want that elevated uh, RPM that park gives. Uh, neutral is where you want to be. Uh, manual, clutch in, not in gear, obviously. Um, that measurement of vacuum in neutral at idle, let's say it's uh, 12 uh, inches of vacuum that you're pulling. So the value on these springs is half of what that actual vacuum reading is. So if you're at a 12, I would choose the five. 
If you're at 14 inches of vacuum, then choose the 7. It's half the value, but that spring needs to be lesser than what the actual vacuum rating is in the engine. And we'll talk about that here in a quick second of why that is. But you're trying to keep the rods down. You're trying to keep it out of the rich stage, out of the rich diameter of the rod because you need that a little bit extra shot of fuel when you're coming off of that idle and get into more of a power range. So that's what the spring does. It holds the rod down into the jet a little bit better uh, until you get to that area where you need it. So like we mentioned, we are tuning here for the best throttle response, and that's what we're trying to do is to give the rod and the jet the adjustability to get out of the different stages in the rod as it pulls up so to give you that little extra shot of fuel that you need to make the transition from a lot less load to more load. But let's talk about that for a minute and what factors affect the vacuum and the type of spring to choose because... This isn't always perfect. If you're running 14 inches of vacuum and you choose the seven pound spring, it might not be enough. Uh, engine vacuum is obviously a, a big part of it, but the cam profile, the longer the duration cam, depending on the opening and closing events of the camshaft, it's going to change the type of load that's on the engine and the type of vacuum it creates. Intake manifold, compression ratio, the altitude that you're at. If you're down here, you know, a thousand foot over sea level where I'm at now, um, it's probably not going to be too much different than sea level. But when you get up into New Mexico, Denver area where you're a mile above sea level, it's certainly going to change uh, the vacuum uh, or the spring that you need depending on how much fuel that the engine is demanding. So here's another little tip with these. If you don't have a vacuum gauge, they're fairly inexpensive, but if you don't have a, a vacuum gauge, start with the heaviest spring. In this case, it's the silver spring. It's at eight inches. Start with the heaviest one. If it cures the problem, the stumble, the, the off idle little stumble, then drop down to the pink spring, which is the seven and keep dropping down until you get to back into the problem again, then go back up one, you should be good to go. So again, it's just more of a tuning process, but selecting the right spring is pretty critical because you're trying to get to a, a place where you can start to work with it, measure it, uh, and start the tuning process. So uh, a good vacuum gauge, they're not that expensive. I think you can buy them Amazon, whatever. I'll, I'll try to leave a link down to the one below. I'll have to see if I can find one online, uh, the one that I use online, but uh, I'll leave a link down below that as well. But that's how you select the spring uh, to get the one you need for your engine setup. Now, something else to consider on this tuning chart is the secondary metering block here. Now, you, it, they show you what jet sizes are on there on a stock calibration for this carburetor when it comes out of the factory. And then it also shows you what one stage lean, two stage lean, two stage rich, one stage rich, whatever. But it's very difficult to ascertain where to set this just by seat of the pants tuning. And that's where the AFR comes in. When you look at the secondary metering here and you look at the correlation here between the, the two tables, um, the table and then the reference over here on the on the right with um, the, the rods and jets, seat of the pants tuning really doesn't do that for you. You have to do this by AFR. And I'm going to link down in the description a really good AFR gauge that I'm now using and what that will do for you here on this this chart so AFR is really the best way to do this you've got all the tools here with um, you know telling you what jet to use when you want to go rich or lean but you really don't know if you're rich or lean unless you can read that reading at wide open throttle with an AFR gauge so go ahead and do this right hook up an AFR into the exhaust and and read it and then that way when you go to make this adjustment on the secondary, you'll know which way to go and what jet number to use. One last little detail in this kit is Edelbrock includes some more retainer clips that hold the rod onto the piston, so you'll find a couple of those in the kit as well. Now, again, it's like anything else. When we tune these carburetors, 
it's a matter of following a process. And we talked about that pretty extensively in the ultimate tuning guide where I showed you step by step kind of how to go through the tuning chart and how to look at all that. But it's like anything else. If you start out with a poor base, you're not going to be able to finish and get the result that you want. So make sure the fuel system is correct. Make sure you have all those details figured out. You know, make sure you get the, a good regulator. Make sure you have a, you know, the, the filters are serviced and, and properly. Um, all the little details here, um, you know, get a good regulator gauge. You know, I mean, I use air, a lot of aeromotive stuff as well because it works. It, it handles everything you need. I use a lot of regular uh, aeromotive um, fuel filters because they work and they've got replaceable elements. And I know that they won't have a big pressure drop using it. So anyway, all good. You know, lots of little details here. Um, you know, lots of little things on this kit. But, you know, once you dig into it and you start using it, you're going to have no problem with it. Um, but like anything else, if you have any questions on the tuning kit, how to use it, how to tune your vehicle, don't hesitate. Leave them down below. I'd love to help you. Um, and then obviously, hey, if you got something out of the video and you thought it was cool, please give me a thumbs up on it. I uh, certainly do appreciate that. And I guess we will catch you all on the next video. Thanks.